Hey everyone, Megarex here, and I welcome you to my unit review of one of the latest additions to the Fire Emblem Heroes roster, the Priestess of Dawn herself, Mikaya, from Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Mikaya is a very special unit, as her weapon makes her the second unit in the game capable of dealing effective damage against two types of enemies, the first one being Merrick's Excalibur against flyer units and PD raids. Anyway, let's talk about Mikaya's unique and uninheritable skills, Thani and Sacrifice. So here's Thani. It grants resistance plus 3 and deals effective damage against armored and cavalry foes. Also against armored and cavalry foes using bow, dagger, magic or staff, she receives the effects of deflect missile and deflect magic one sacred seals I believe. She reduces 30% of the damage dealt by the first attack. This is ridiculous as it allows her to take pretty much a hit from any cavalry or armor unit in the game, of course from range, and counter for fatal damage, completely countering those units. This is a really good weapon, in my opinion the best in the game as of now. It is also funny and worth mentioning how it mentions daggers, since there are no armor daggers and cavalry daggers, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are no. So, yeah, there's that. That pretty funny bit of information there. Maybe they are planning to release a dagger armor unit, because I don't really see a cavalry dagger working. Anyway, moving on. This is Sacrifice, converts penalties on target into bonuses, restores target's HP equal units current HP minus 1, units HP reduced by amount restored. Again, with the confusing wording from the translation team, this is a very simple skill to understand. It's harsh command, uh, it can even be used if, if the unit is at full HP, you don't need to be able to heal a unit to use the harsh command effect, which is always nice. It's something else that you can actually use to your advantage. I don't think it's, it's really cool to have harsh command into added into the skill, but the next part is what may be a little bit confusing. It's not. It's very simple. You just Mikaya transfers her HP to her allies. If an ally is missing 10 HP, she's just going to transfer 10 of her HP to the ally, and that's it. She cannot go below 1 HP, of course. Yes customary with Ardent Sacrifice and all the other similar skills. Let's get into the builds. Here we have pretty much her base kit, except I swapped guard for quick repost. And with this set, she can pretty much tank any ranged unit. Especially armors and cavaliers, thanks to the Tannis in setting 30% reduction on the first attack passive. And while this might seem to be a set focused, focused solely on enemy phase, it actually holds its own really well on player phase. Again, thanks to Athani's potential of being devastating against two different movement types. Drip Attack provides area support for the rest of the team, which is always good to have. Sacrifice is preferred over other command skills for Arena for its highest SP cost, but you can run Reposition with this set as well, since she can reliably tank the front lines, provided no strong melee unit can reach her. Also, the harsh command effect on her command slot might come in handy. It's always good to have more options. So that one last build was a little bit more on the defensive side. So what about offense? So here we got this one. I recommend an attack boon and a speed bane, as pretty much anyone else does, since speed is kind of negligible on her because it's already so low and attack will ensure she can one round kill all cavaliers and armor knights. So yeah, of course dead blow 3 is a good option in A, although fury can work just as well with the added benefit of some extra bulk and allowing her to take more attacks on enemy phase, even though this set is more clearly oriented to player phase. Desperation Brush Assault combo are ridiculous on her, because this will not only 
make her completely destroy armor knights and cavaliers, but also other ranged units like dagger units, staff units, or archers that are not mounted or armored. So with this it she'll pretty much cover over 60% of the cast. It's also pretty simple to get since desperation is super easy to get, she comes with drive attack already, and that look can be acquired from Forster Klein or if you can spare the feathers you could upgrade a Hawkeye or an Effie, and it would definitely be worth it. Without summoner support she attacks for 58 damage, and if the unit is ranged of course she is going to do this twice before getting any retaliation, she'll pretty much kill everything. And also she has Sacrifice, which allows her to reach Desperation range with almost no risk. You should run her with a strong frontline unit, like maybe, I don't know, Ike or something that can take a hit and take some damage, but not die, so that he can activate Sacrifice, and then she goes from there. She completely wrecks house with this set if she is in Desperation range. Uh, also, here are her stats with summoner support, which are completely ridiculous. Also, this, this simulator doesn't account Thani's extra resistance, so this should be 38 and 40 resistance, which is completely ridiculous. So yeah, if you're more of a player face player, you, I cannot recommend this build enough. It's easy to get on her, and it's really good, and even if you didn't have a plus attack, it should work, even if it's minus attack, really. So those two last builds are actually what I would recommend from the get-go to try and do with her, but let's say you want to take it a little bit further, and you were not so lucky and got up, I don't know, plus speed Micaiah. Uh, having 31 speed plus speed might not be the best, but how about the... Uh, you try this build. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit crazy, but chances are Mikaya is your favorite unit, and you are free to play a player, and you got a plus speed one. Well, here are a couple of suggestions I can make to you. You can try and play around life and death, and try to salvage her speed a little bit, Summoner support is completely recommended for this kind of build, because as you can see here, with life and death and summoner support, she can reach the respectable speed of 38, without buffs. So after a hound and ally support, hopefully, she'll be around 43 and 44 speed, which is really decent and mostly enough to double a lot of units. Of course, I recommend Brazen Attack Speed 3 because she does not lose on the defense and the resistance, and you can run Speed Ploy, further increasing her doubling potential. And of course, giving 7 to attack and 7 to speed instead of 3 from Life and Dead. But of course, this skill is locked behind a seasonal unit. But it would, it would be fantastic to run it on her, I believe. You. I want to use Heavy Blade on the on the Sacred Seal because thanks to her high attack, she'll pretty much be proccing it against everyone. If you account for Summoner support and Bryson attack, you're gonna have 58 attack before buffs and before ally support, with possible 64 damage after hone and ally support. So you will be reliably proccing Heavy Blade and the double attack. Racing attack speed 3 and desperation synergize really well because they both activate roughly at the same time. So you will be attacking for about 60 damage with a guaranteed glimmer proc every round of combat. Again, this is a build a little bit on the crazier side, but I mean, if I had racing attack speed, I would really love to build it. It, it sounds actually like a really good use of the heavy blade 3 seal. But I will let I will leave that, that to your discretion. So yeah, there you have it. That's pretty much Mikaya for you. 
It is also worth mentioning that she is probably the only unit as of now that can reliably one round Sigurd and she also can tank Bravelin, a plus 10 Bravelin that is plus attack and home cavalry buff with her pitiful 18 defense. I, I ran some calculations on my head and I am pretty sure she can survive a plus 10 Bravelin without any type of buffs and at neutral defense. All thanks to the Thani's 30% reduction and of course she's gonna one shot her in return because she's effective against cavalry. So really if you're str struggling with armors or cavaliers or really stuff like that, she's a must have for your arena or arena assault teams. She's gonna be an invaluable member for any barracks to have Especially for Arena Assault, where you might run into a team that you can't really deal with. Or even Arena, you can just spam your dual swords and retry until you feel like you're gonna face an armor or a cavalry team from the from the the screen where you select your your opponent. And you'll pretty much dominate it with her. Just make sure to support her correctly buff her defenses a little bit and you'll be able to bait probably even Cecilia. I, I haven't done the calculations on that, don't quote me on that, but she might be able to even tank a Grumblade Cecilia. I'm definitely sure she can take Bravelin and Sigurd easily. Sander will do nothing against her and yeah, she's gonna be invaluable for Arena and Arena Assault. And I guess that's all I have to say about her. Nothing really comes to my mind. So, there you have it. This this is gonna be it for this video. And, I mean, this is a kind of experimental video. Something a little lighter on the edition and, and stuff. So, let me know if you like this. Let me know if, if the way I present things to you, the the stats with and without the summoner support and all that if you like it and also let me know if you like my builds or if you think I'm completely dumb and don't know what I'm doing uh, I really think there's not much else to say as always leave a like comment and subscribe and all that good stuff and I will be seeing you in the next unit review or whatever I will call this